Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the New Orleans Kings franchise as we start out the season through the first 15 games pretty strong, and our offense has really been the difference so far this year. Acquiring Carlos Santana has given us quite a boost to our lineup, and so did signing Michael Brantley. I think those two have definitely contributed early on in the success of this team. And you can just see it's rubbed off on other players like Jake Cave. He's hitting 367 to start this season. And the young guys are doing pretty well. Justin Thompson hitting 333. Corey Lee starts out hitting 361 with 11 runs. So he is actually scoring quite a bit as well. Good to see that. Nate Barron has been the surprise of this team. I have been excited for him. I was excited for him in spring training. He did really, really well. And he pretty much outshined our top prospect in Jeremy Pena, who right now in nine at-bats is hitting 222. So we will move through a lot of gameplay in this episode, but starting out right away, Hoi Young Park has just been disappointing. He gets hurt once again. And, you know, since we moved up all these guys like Nate Barron and Jeremy Pena and even Justin Thompson, we don't really have a top prospect in the field at all. I mean, we do have... Uh, Herrera, who we saw, who we traded for in the offseason, but that's pretty much it. I mean, nobody that's really even, you know, knocking on the door as far as the MLB goes, maybe even not even one or two years down the road right now. I think we will eventually need to get another prospect and we'll build through the draft, obviously, but nobody that's kind of like, hey, if this guy is turning it up, all of a sudden he might be moved up. So we do get a trade off from the Diamondbacks. That was a pretty much a no. That was an easy no. But now we hop into the gameplay here. In this game, we play the Toronto Blue Jays down by one run in the ninth inning with Jake Cave at the plate. Let's just see if we can come back in this one. So here is a hit up the middle, and that's Cave. And he was hitting 367 like I just showed a little bit ago. He has been hot for us this year. That brings up an even hotter hitter. That's Carlos Santana hitting in the five hole this game, and he swings and misses. A little bit anxious with him. And that is a bad strikeout as that brings up David Bodie hitting in the six hole who hits one hard to the left side. That's a perfect grounder through the hole. And now guys on first and second, one out. And that one will bring up Jesus Aguilar who has been a really good player for us the last two years. And he's 0 for 4 in this game and he hits one hard to the right side and is fielded. And he's got zero speed so no way he beats that out. And the Blue Jays win this one 7 to 6. And we could not win that one in the ninth. We had an opportunity with a nice leadoff hit by Jay Cave, but we just couldn't get that extra run in to at least tie the game. We even doubled their hits, 15 to 7, and we still lose this game by one run. So Corey Canabo got the save in that one as we move on more in the schedule, and we face Toronto again now in another critical situation. Now this one's a little better. Bottom of the 10th inning, bottom of the ninth inning, I should say, 10-10. We have 17 hits. I mean, this offense is just explosive. And here comes Jeremy Pena. He is three for four in this game, so he has recovered a little bit since starting slow. And he hits one up the middle, and that one drops in. And that one is going to send the runner from third, and they don't even throw this one home. That is the game. And look at Jeremy Pena coming through, bringing in Corey Lee, who I highlighted has scored quite a bit of runs in this, uh, this season to start it out. And Jeremy Pena comes through. So maybe this is a little bit of a breakthrough for him. He gets the walk off 11 to 10 here as Tapia leading off went three for four in this game with the home run and three RBIs. And this offense is just really good. Jeremy Pena goes four for five in that game. So hopefully he gets started. So now we move into the next series facing the Angels who are in first place right now. It's between us and the Angels in the early parts of the season. And here in the bottom of the uh, top of the ninth inning, I should say. Pablo Lopez on the mound and looking to go the distance here in a complete game shutout. So here is Wilson Ramos at the plate here with one out. Ground ball up the middle, and that is Nate Barron who can't hold on to that one, and that one will be uh, an error credited to him. And no, they will call it a base hit. I'm surprised at that one. Now that brings up Clint Frazier, who we traded in the offseason for Keenan Middleton. You can see so far, he's hitting 371. He's hitting very, very well. So let's see what he can do in his first bat at bat facing his former team. And he will strike out. And Pablo Lopez gets another strikeout here and brings it to two outs. Brings up CJ Crone. 
who hits one hard up the middle. Will it get past Nate Barron? And it will. And now they got guys on first and second here. Two outs. Let's see if we can keep this shutout going. Is that brings up Blackenhorn to the plate, who hits another one up the middle. And that one does squeeze through. Let's see if they send the runner, runner from third. They won't. The throw is on line. So base is loaded here. Let's see if we go to the bullpen. But no, we do lead Pablo Lopez in. Ground ball to the right side, and it gets through. So they do get one run on the board. But now it's 5-1. to one. A home run could literally tie this game up, and I would be really, really upset. So we bring in Brad Hand to at least just get us out of this jam. And you see he is kind of out to a slow start. Four saves and six opportunities, already two blown. So that brings up Angelton Simmons here, who does lead it off for the Angels. And he is going to swing and miss at a low pitch there. And that one was out of the zone. But we do get the strikeout to end this one. Five to one as the Angels were knocking on the door at the end of that game. But we do get the victory. That's a pretty good game for our man Brad Hand out of the bullpen. So now we look at our stats here and look at the middle infielders, the young middle infielders, Jeremy Pena, Yanni Hernandez, and Scooter Jeanette. And it looks like, you know, Jeremy Pena is doing really well, 19 at-bats, hitting over 300. And I can't say the same for our man Yanni. He is hitting around 211, and even Scooter Jeanette is hitting around that same average. So they are kind of struggling. So I'm going to actually allow Jeremy Pena to blossom a little bit. I'm going to put him in the lineup and uh, allow him to go to shortstop and start there versus uh, right-handed hitters. And I might play him versus left-handed hitters as well, but I like to ease these guys in, platooning them. I have a bunch of young guys. I want to get all these guys some good playing time and keep them well-rested. I think that's why they're hitting so well. So now we hop into the next series. This one's versus the Seattle Mariners, who are really, really rebuilding. I mean, they are not even close to competing. And now we have an 8 nothing game with Forrest Whitley on the mound. And here in the eighth inning, he gets a ground ball up the middle. That is going to be a double play here for Whitley. He's got a commanding lead here, eight-run lead. And that brings up Dom Thompson-Williams to the plate. And that is going to be a hit to shortstop and Jeremy Pena. That's why I love him. He just casually has a strong arm, throws it to first, and that's an easy out. As we move on to the ninth inning in this one, Luke O'Connor comes onto the mound. I really like this kid a lot. He is uh, one of your custom prospects, I should say. But he was on the MLB roster all year last year and had a whip around one. And here he does close us out. And that one isn't a save, obviously, with an eight-run lead. But we do get the pop out in the infield to end this game. And eight nothing, a commanding win here versus a divisional opponent. That is a good victory here as we move on closer into the month of May. So now we move on to the next series, facing Oakland with a 9-2 lead, and Brantley has a bit of a game going. One more hit away from a cycle. He hits a triple here, and he will get it, and it's going to be a liner into left field, so I'll take it. A 4-for-5 game from him. It wasn't exactly a triple, but he does get the hit. And he starts out this season hot as always. I mean, he's hit around 330 the last three seasons. And I'm glad to have him hitting hot. He is right in the middle of our lineup and doing quite well. And he does go four for five in this one as we do snag the win in this game as well. Nine to four off of 13 hits. So now we do move on to the end of the month of April into the month of May. And you can see we do end the month versus Oakland. And now Brad Hand has another opportunity versus Oakland. And these are the games we have to win early because we want to set the tone in the division early on in the season. And now Brad Hand on the mound, bottom of the ninth inning, two outs. We're going to play this one. Matt Chapman's at the plate. Let's see if we can get out of this jam. So here's a ball up the middle. Ground ball. Let's see if we get to it. And we do. And that is a nice flip. And that is going to be Nate Barron. And we do get the out. So another victory, 5-4 to four here on the road versus the Oakland Athletics. And let's see who did well in this one. Jesus Aguilar, three for four. I mean, the middle of our lineup really, really hitting the ball well. Every single game, it's somebody different going three for four, four for five. And you can just see, I mean, these guys are really performing well here in season three. So here is another situation. Now playing the Boston Red Sox at the end of the month of April. And now we're down by one run at home. Another opportunity to maybe come back and hit another walk-off like Jeremy Pena did a few games ago. And here's Michael Brantley at the plate. 
but it's not going to happen this time. Ground ball to short, and we lose this one. 7-6 to six to another AL opponent. I said we would get through a lot of games in this episode. I like to have episodes like this because it's, it's impossible to get through all games and kind of make this series entertaining and have you go through seasons and see how guys progress. So I will have episodes like this. It won't be a whole lot where I get through a ton of games, but this is one of those episodes. So now we move into the month of May and looking at our April, we were kind of hovering around 500 to be honest, maybe a couple more games over uh, 500, but we're only seven games over and it's a good start, but we do have to catch the Angels who are off to an even hotter start. So here is Corey Lee at the plate. He has uh, dipped his average just a little bit since he started over 300 to start the season. Now he's at about 287, and here he has an opportunity to hit for the cycle, and he hits one deep to center field, and that one is not going to be deep enough, and it's going to be an out. But 12 to 7 in this one, we should go on to win it, and we do. And Jose Arquiti looks like he got the win in this one since the camera is on him, and he is more of a relief pitcher now. If a player does get hurt, say one of our starters he will, will go back into that starting lineup i do still have jimmy jimmy pelko as a good prospect to eventually move up but right now i don't need him so i'm not going to rush him up he's only 19 years old so here's another game versus the angels and i said that they are doing quite well this year and they are and here's forrest whitley with another complete game going here in a five to nothing game there are just games where these guys just pitch well forrest whitley is an awesome pitcher when it comes to pitching for distance. I mean, he is going to give you a pretty good outing and go deep into games. He's at 100 pitches at this point. And now here's the 102nd pitch. And here's Clint Frazier at the plate once again. Let's see if we can get our old buddy out. As here's Forrest Whitley with two outs, 0-1 count. And he gets a slider. And Clint Frazier goes the opposite field, but it's not going to be deep enough. It's going to be run down by Jake Cave in right field. And Whitley gets another win. He has started out really, really well. Nine innings pitched, five strikeouts, only one walk, and gave up seven hits. That's a good outing for Forrest Whitley. So now we move on to the next series, Texas Rangers. Eight to one in this one. I don't even know if I'm going to play it, but I will. Let's see what Jay Cave can do. He is a triple away from the cycle, three for four in this game. And Jay Cave has started out this season hot once again. And here he's facing Brett Martin, and he hits one down the right field line. That one does get to the corner. J.K. doesn't have the best speed, but look at this. We kind of hesitate, and that was a issue on my part. I forgot the controls there, but we did get in a second with a double. But I don't think we would have got the triple anyway. That ball was in pretty quickly, but still a big game. Four for five for J.K. Just keep switching off. Everybody goes four for five, and we get the victory in this one, eight to one. This one was a pretty easy win, to be honest. And we start out the month of May pretty good, but still hovering over that 500 mark. As now, here's Carlos Santana at the plate versus the Oakland Athletics. Down by one run in the bottom of the ninth inning. And let's see what he can do. So this is with no outs in the inning. 3-2 count, and he is going to watch that one. That was actually an 11 pitch at bat. And he finally got him out on that pitch. And that one will end up doing it in this one. The Oakland Athletics do end up going on to winning. And they get the victory 2-1. to one. So, you know, there's some battles going on in this division early on in the season. I think this team and this division is really, really slated to have a competitive season. And that's one thing that I do like about the AL West here in this dynasty, in this franchise, because everybody's good. It's not like we dominate. It's not like we're terrible either. I, I think we're kind of just beating up on each other. And that's the kind of competition you want. So towards the end of the month of May, we actually go on a five game winning, winning streak before losing to Oakland one to six. But we actually did pretty well here in the month of May. I would say we had a pretty good lump of wins on the road, and that definitely boded well for the organization and the, and the uh, MLB level team. And then we will start to look at some of our minor league teams later. But right now, like I said, we don't have many prospects to really look at because a lot of our prospects are pitchers. A lot of our top ones are, and we will check them out as the season goes on, but not really too many in the field. So... I have a lot of my prospects at the MLB level now, like, say, for example, Yanni Hernandez, Ramel Tapia is kind of a prospect, Corey Lee, Justin Thompson, Nate Barron, Jeremy Pena, all these guys. And you can just see they're all hitting well. Tapia is hitting 291. Corey Lee has dipped a little bit, 264. 
Justin Thompson's hitting 290. That's pretty good for his rookie season. I wonder if one of our players are going to win Rookie of the Year, if they're just going to battle out for one, two, and three for Rookie of the Year. That would be something. Nate Barron's hitting 321 so far, and he is hitting amazing. He's got 31 RBIs already. That is a very, very good season. He's got four home runs as well. Jeremy Pena is hitting 296, so he's gotten some playing time now and hitting a lot better. Maybe the tune has turned on him, and then Scooter is not hitting well at all in limited action. I want to see him get going, but he is actually fighting for that contract as well. I don't know if I'll keep him. I loved how clutch he was in the playoffs last year, and I will remember that when it comes contract time, but I definitely need to see some better hitting out of him. So from the bullpen side of things and the rotation side of things, Alex Wood is pitching really well like he always does in the regular season. He's 4-2, and two, about a 119 whip. Tyler Glass now is struggling, though, just like last year. This is what the theme with him is. I mean, he just doesn't pitch well in the regular season, but in the postseason, he pitched really, really well. So I need to see him clean that up a little bit. I do have a contract extension coming up for him, so we will need to answer that question as well. Now, looking at our bullpen, Alex Claudio is pitching really well. Luke O'Connor is struggling just a little bit, but Jose Arquiti is really struggling. He's at a two whip, and he's already got 37 innings pitched. So that is, like, bad, bad. I mean, this is, like, you need to be moved down bad. He's in already appeared in 28 games. So maybe a change there would be worth it. We do have Jimmy Pelko, like I highlighted. He's got a 122 whip. He's at the AAA level. He's 19 years old. I just don't want to rush him up. He's got a lot of potential and a lot of career ahead of him, to be honest. And like I said, he's really good at 19, 76 overall. He's going to be good. Igwobu is really, really good as well, but he's only 67 overall, 21 years old. He's got a lot of development time to go. And then Geraldo Herrera is the only real prospect that maybe has a shot in our future to be a MLB player, to be honest. And looking at him, he's sitting around 260. He's really, really good with his arm. He's got an 82 arm. And then looking at his hitting ratings, I mean, they're pretty good. So looking at just the standings here, we are second in the AL West, and we are tied for that wild card spot. So we will have to, you know, catch up a little bit to the Angels. We're not too far behind. A lot of season left, but our offense has definitely been there this season and has been doing well for us. So we will look to improve pitching wise and start to drag out these wins, especially versus divisional opponents. So that's going to do it here in this episode. I said a lot of gameplay and that's what we did. Hit subscribe, hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I've been working hard for a minute. The ones who don't deserve it seem to be the ones that get it. The ones who speak the truth never get the recognition. But the ones that act foolish seem to get all the attention. It don't matter though. Yeah. And it don't even matter though. Nope. Hey, it don't even matter.